Let's look at uh, working with indices. Now, I, I think that probably uh, in, a, in our first stages of A-level work that working with indices is the topic that most students find very difficult. Um, now, I've deliberately put these up on uh, the, the screen to start with. Um, not to deliberately frighten you, but I suspect that some of you might be frightened looking at those, but just to try and indicate that sometimes the way this topic is taught is by having this sea of rules here uh, on a piece of paper or in a textbook, and then uh, the questions, you're expected to go straight into them and master how to do them straight away. Um, so. I want you to try and get a feel of the patterns that are involved with these rules um, to try and realize that in a way they're actually all related and uh, to see how we would cope with the sort of question that uh, you'd be first of all asked to do um, in, in a core one uh, situation. I'm sure you've all come across these rules before because, they're, again, they're all in the GCSE course, so this is not a new area, but, but I expect you'll be saying, oh, I used to have terrible trouble with this. Um, let's hope we can sort out some of the problems. Now, a question can be very basic. It could literally be asking you to say, what is 4 to the power of half? And so, is your mind thinking, oh, which, which rule is it? Or have you learnt them in such a way that you know that a fraction power is something to do with roots? Because these, this rule down here uh, looks a bit unfriendly, doesn't it? But let's just try and, in your mind, say a fraction power is to do with a root. <clears throat> and because it's a 2 there, it's a square root. So the, what is the square root of 4? It is, of course, 2. So if you're then asked, um, what is 27 to the 2 thirds, again, your mind said, well, it's something to do with roots. It's a fraction again. But there are two numbers in it this time. I mean, there were two here, but of course this is, this is a 1, which just tells us, in a sense, to, to not worry about it. The number on the bottom, the root bit, is a 3. What is the cube root of 27? It is 3. Then you worry about the top number. 3 squared is 9. Let's try another one. 25 to the minus 3 over 2. Remember, you're not allowed a calculator in core 1. What's different about this one? It's got a negative power. So the rules with negative power is right at the bottom of my list here. So if you're thinking through rules, you probably might give up almost before you get here. What is the important thing to remember? A negative power means something different. It means 1 over. The mathematical word for 1 over is probably the most forgotten word in uh, mathematics is the reciprocal. So this is a reciprocal and it only tells you that it's a reciprocal. It doesn't do anything else. So the fact that that's uh, a negative power means it's 1 over. And you put the whole thing down again without doing anything to it. Now you look at the bottom line, it's a fraction power. The 2 square root. So what is the square root of 25? It's 5. And then I have to cube that. So finally, we end up with 1 over 5 times 5 times 5. And yes, I know you haven't got a calculator, but uh, you've got to learn some of these basic numbers at some point. So it's not too difficult to learn that 5 cubed is 125. So there you are, that's how you tackle the sort of a basic question. If you've got those skills up here in your head, then you don't panic when you see 9 over 4 to the power minus 3 over 2. Because you've learnt things in the correct order. 
So, you look at this. Now, the negative sign is the most important thing to deal with first, in my opinion. So, the negative sign means 1 over. 1 over what? The whole thing written down again. So, you don't change anything. You just write it as 1 over. Now, 3 over 2 is a fraction, a fraction power. The bottom number is the square root. What is the square root of 9 over 4? Well, you should know that the square root of a fraction is the same as square rooting the top number, which is 3, and square rooting the bottom number, which is 2. Must make sure your fraction skills are, are, are up to speed with this. Now, it's still 1 over. 3 over 2 cubed, what does that mean? It means 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 times 3 over 2. So 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then we have the student's nightmare. What is 1 over 27 over 8? Now, I'm certainly not going to try and set out to confuse you at this early stage, but it really depends how carefully you write that down, because if we had 1 over 27 over 8 written like that, then that means something different. So the length of these lines is really important. So the reciprocal bit, remember the negative power is the reciprocal bit. I want the reciprocal of 27 over 8. And the reciprocal of a fraction is the same as inverting the fraction. So 1 over 27 over 8 is 8 over 27 because it really means 1 divided by 27 over 8. And if you're good with working with fractions, you know that if you want to uh, divide by a fraction, you, of course, turn it upside down, and then you multiply. So 1 times 8 over 27 is 8 over 27. Now, there's only one way to get good at these, and that's to practice. Um, I'm sure when I was your age studying this, I would have enjoyed sitting down doing probably a hundred of these. Well, that's what I'm suggesting that you go away and do now. Don't get phased by this list, okay? It looks messy. It is a bit messy. But these rules we're going to develop in the next two or three videos. Um, again, if you see them as being helpful and friendly, then uh, hopefully you can develop uh, the skills that, that uh, people like us will have developed over a long period of time. Okay, so fraction means a root, negative means a reciprocal. Okay, well good luck with, with practicing these. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant. Spot on. Well done.